Africanism, peace and pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Ogun Tade. I've been getting a bunch of text messages about the National Society of Black Engineers. The National Society of Black Engineers gave a scholarship to a Caucasian young man. No shade on the young Caucasian male. Congratulations on receiving your scholarship. I hope you are thankful from the African community for receiving that scholarship. And we wish you well and hope that you will not practice racism against African people. Okay? But there are some other black engineers who could have used this scholarship. There's some other black engineers who could have used the scholarship. Thank you. Somebody took the words out of my mouth. Red the greatest. Thank you, Sister Red, the greatest. You took the words right out of my mouth when you said we can't keep nothing sacred. You absolutely right, Sister Red, the greatest. You absolutely right, Sister Red, the greatest. You took the words right out of my mouth. This is why I say you cannot have a white goat of hip hop. This is exactly why I said you cannot have a white goat of hip hop. Now let's go to the white recipient of the engineer's award. By giving that white male no shade on him or his family, no disrespect to that young man or his family is not his fault. No shade on him. Congratulations on the scholarship. But by giving him the engineering scholarship, you just took a scholarship out of the mouth of a black child. By giving him the scholarship, you just took a scholarship out of the mouth of a black child. When are we as black people going to wake up? When are we as African people going to wake up and realize that whenever you help somebody else before helping one of your own, you just gave them an advantage over us? When are we going to wake up and smell the coffee? I'm coming to you live and direct from Central America. I'm coming to you live and direct from Central America. Somebody zesty. Okay, we got a zest. We got zest going on. Okay, we got the zest fest. I'm coming to you live and direct from Central America. And I need y'all to understand. We are in the worst condition. African people worldwide are in the worst condition. We don't hate nobody. We don't wish ill of nobody. We don't want to harm nobody. But we are in a state of crisis. We are fighting for our survival. How can you give a scholarship to a white boy when there's so many black boys who need that scholarship? I'm talking to the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm talking to the National Society of Black Engineers. This is my same argument for MC Shan. This is my same argument for Ed Lover. This is my same argument for DJ Academics. This is my same argument for Mav Hoffa, for Joe Button. This is my same argument. I don't have nothing against Eminem. He's a talented artist. He's a talented artist. But if you're going to call him the GOAT, you're taking a spot from us. If you're going to call him the goat, you're taking a spot from us and giving it to another people. Why can't you see this? Why can't you see this? It's about self-preservation. The first law of survival is self-preservation. The first law of survival is self-preservation. The first law of survival is self-preservation. That's the first law of survival. We giving scholarships to white people from organizations that's supposed to help black people. We giving scholarships to white people from organizations that's supposed to help black people. We giving scholarships to white people from organizations that's supposed to help black people. We calling white artists the greatest to ever do it, keeping a black artist from being called the greatest to ever do it. This ain't racism. This is racial preservation. This ain't racism. This is race fundamentalism. This ain't racism. This is racial self-preservation, brothers and sisters. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up? Who tapping in right now? Central America. This is an African queen. No snow bunnies on the live today. 
Okay. Tap in. Who want to go live? Tap in with Dr. Umar live from Central America for the first time. This is history, brothers and sisters. This, this is history. Who tapping in live with the prince? Who's tapping in live with the King Kong of consciousness? Shekinah going once. Shekinah going twice. Shekinah declined. Who tapping in with the prince? Sister Sasha going once. Sister Sasha going twice. Sister Sasha going three times. Where you at, Sister Sasha? Sasha, how you doing, Queen? I'm good. How are you? Where you at in the world, sister? What city? I'm in New Mexico. We actually talked about a couple months ago as far okay, as you in New the... Mexico? Yeah. I spoke yeah. in Albuquerque. I spoke at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque back in 2015. I see, okay. I wasn't I wasn't woke back then. I was like 18, 19. Were you born in New Mexico? No, I was born in Philly. Get out of here. How did you get to New Mexico from Philly? It, it's kind of like, it's kind of a move of spite. I wasn't really getting along with my mother too well. We've, you know, So how is life in New Mexico for black folks? Is there a lot of us down there? What do we do down there? Do we bunny hop? What are we doing down there? Absolutely. Bunny hop. A lot of bunny hop in New Mexico. Bunny hop into the day you die. Like when I first came out here and, you know, I started living out here for a couple of years, you know, I would see black folks and it's so rare, especially in Santa Fe, Albuquerque, you know, you do get us there, but now, where you like, at? You I'm from Santa Fe. No, I'm in Albuquerque right now. Okay. You're in Albuquerque. Okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. So no, it's okay. Um, it's kind of like, okay. I'm just going to say this. I have seen so many fine black men with these overweight Latina joints, and I'm like. Brown bunny hopping. They've been brown bunny hopping. Yes. And I'm just like, yo. Why do you think so many of our brothers go for the brown bunnies in Albuquerque, New Mexico? We have a brown bunny crisis amongst black men in Albuquerque. Why do you think? Why they would take an <laughs> overweight brown bunny instead of a beautiful sexy caramel african bunny i think it's because they think they're getting better like i think it's because they think they're getting better than a black woman and plus there's not a lot of black women out here there isn't like it's rare like for me to see like another black woman to be like i'd be like oh what's up sis you know like i try to stay in contact with them as as up a little bit baby go back going live for the first time ever going live for the first time ever going live for the first time ever from the republic of panama i am in the republic of panama i am in the republic of panama i want to let all my central american africans know that the prince of pan-africanism has invaded Central America, brothers and sisters. I am here. The weather is good. The people are good. I'm looking forward to lending my expertise, intelligence, critical analysis skills to the rebirth of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey's Black Star Line Steamship Company Corporation, brothers and sisters. We are here for the express purpose of rebirthing the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey's Black Star Line Steam Ship Corporation. Oh, yes. But not only that, not only that, I want to make a connection with all my Central American Africans, all my Central American Spanish speaking Africans. I want to meet all of you. I will be speaking at the same park that the honorable Marcus Garvey spoke at in Colon City, Panama. For those of you who don't know, Colon City, Panama was the heartbeat of the enslaved African slave trade in Central America. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. For those of you who don't know, Colon City, Panama, 
the blackest city in Panama, one of the blackest cities in Central America, that was the headquarters for the enslavement of African people. That was the headquarters for the African slave trade. I will be speaking there on Wednesday, January the 10th. I will be speaking there on Wednesday, January the 10th. I will be speaking in the park where Marcus Garvey spoke on Wednesday, January the 10th in Colon City, Panama. I want my Guatemalan Africans to make the journey to Colon City, Panama. I want my Honduras Africans to make the journey to Colon City, Panama. I want my Belize Africans to make the journey to Colon City, Panama. I want my El Salvador Africans to make the journey to Colon City, Panama. I want my Colombian Africans to make the journey to Colon City, Panama. And I want all of my Panamanian Africans I want all of my Panamanian Africans to come join with me in solidarity as we give birth, as we give birth, as we give birth to the Central American Pan-African movement. I'm going to say it again. I'm coming back to Central America to organize all my Spanish speaking American Africans. You thought I would leave you out Central America? My Central American Africans thought Dr. Umar only cared about Africa. You thought Dr. Umar only cared about the Caribbean. You thought Dr. Umar only cared about Canada, in Europe, in France, in the UK. You thought Dr. Umar only cared about the Africans in Asia. Oh no. Pan-Africanism is for all of us and I am coming to organize the Africans, those of you who live in Central America who are proud to be black, those of you who live in Central America who are proud to be African, I know you speak Spanish. I know you speak Spanish. That's okay. Your slave master taught you Spanish. My slave master taught me English. Somebody else's slave master taught them Portuguese. Somebody else's slave master taught them French. But we are African. African DNA. African blood. African ancestry, brothers and sisters. African spirituality. The Prince of Pan-Africanism is here. I want to see everybody from Central America. I want to see all my Pan-Africanists in Central America. I want to see all of my Spanish-speaking Honduras brothers, Belize brothers and sisters, El Salvador brothers and sisters, Colombia brothers and sisters, Panama brothers and sisters. I want to see all of you Wednesday, January the 10th at the park in Cologne City, Panama, brothers and sisters. Today and tomorrow, we focusing on the rebirth of Black Starline. Today and tomorrow, we focusing on the rebirth of Black Starline. Today and tomorrow, we focusing on the rebirth of the Black Starline. Brothers and sisters, my Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tour. I have five stops on my Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tour. Actually, I might have six stops on my Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tour. My first stop will be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I will be at the Clarion Hotel on Industrial Highway by the airport. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I will be at the Clarion Hotel Industrial Highway by the airport. We're talking about the sexual trafficking of black women and the school to prison pipeline. 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Friday, January the 12th. 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. on Friday, January the 12th. 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. on Friday, January the 12th. Clarion Hotel, 76 Industrial Highway by the Philadelphia Airport. We're talking about the sexual trafficking of black women and the school to prison pipeline. My second stop, will be in Camden, New Jersey, Youth Explosion. Excuse me, I stand corrected. My second stop will be Saturday. I'm planning to attend Baba Oduno, Garveyite ancestor Baba Oduno. I'm planning on attending his homegoing celebration in Washington, DC. Rest in paradise to ancestor Baba Oduno. 
one of our longest surviving Garvey elders, rest in paradise to Baba Oduno. His memorial will be in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, January the 13th. I'm trying to attend. I'm not scheduled to speak, brothers and sisters. I'm not scheduled to speak. I'm going to pay my respects to the Garvey elder. Sunday, January the 14th, I fly to Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to be interviewed on a podcast in Atlanta. I'm not speaking in Atlanta. I'm going to be interviewed on a live podcast in Atlanta on Sunday, January the 14th. I will be sharing that flyer. And then on Monday the 15th, I will keynote the Camden, New Jersey, Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Explosion Conference. On Monday, January the 15th, which is Dr. King's actual birthday, Dr. King's actual birthday, I will be in Camden, New Jersey, the keynote, the Black Youth Explosion Conference. I will be the last speaker beginning at 3.30 p.m. I will be the last speaker beginning at 3.30 p.m. And then the very next day, the very next day, on Tuesday, January the 16th, I will keynote the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Where are my Williamsport, Pennsylvania Africans at? Where are my Williamsport and Central Pennsylvania Africans at? I thought that was Suki right there. Where are my Williamsport and Central Pennsylvania Africans at? I'm waiting on the location. And then on Thursday, January the 18th, Sacramento, California, for the first time in 10 years. Thursday, January the 18th, Sacramento, California, for the first time in 10 years. Where are my Sacramento Africans at? Where are my Bay Area Africans at? I want to see my Oakland Africans, my San Fran Africans, my Richmond Africans. All roads lead to Sacramento, California on Thursday, January the 18th. And then Friday, Friday, January the 19th, Antioch, California. Friday, January the 19th, Antioch, California. Sacramento lecture is free. Antioch lecture is free. Sacramento lecture is free. Antioch lecture is free. Sacramento lecture is free. Antioch lecture is free, brothers and sisters. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Read the greatest. Maybe I'll do a meet and greet for Dr. King in Atlanta Saturday night. Who got a space we can use in Atlanta? Who got a space we can use for free in Atlanta? Who got a space we can use for free in Atlanta Saturday night? Who got a space we can use for free in Atlanta for a meet and greet with the Prince of Pan-Africanism? Who got a space we can use? Hit your PayPal, International Africans. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Yes, sir. He's shopping in Panama right now. I'm at the Panamanian Walmart. <laughs> they open pop. Mm. 
and chilling with my Panamanian Africans. Had to go out to the Walmart, you know what I'm saying? Get something to eat, snack on some drinks. Panama, I'm in the building. Where all my Panama City Africans at? See y'all in Cologne City, Wednesday, two to six. All right. Oh, I thought, oh, that's the baby. I thought he said, Umar. I said, who? Go ahead, mama.